Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and now we're going to talk about a voltage-controlled current source, also known as a voltage-to-current transducer. Conceptually, you're familiar with this in terms of a JFET or a MOSFET. Those are voltage-controlled current sources. That's how they're modeled. But today we're going to talk about an op-amp version of this, a more ideal version of this. Here's a basic circuit. I happen to have a bifed op amp here running on 15 volt power supplies as typical. And I have a load in this case of just 50 ohms. Because it's voltage to current, we have a voltage input and I'm interested in the load current, not the load voltage. So I've inserted an ammeter in this circuit so we could see exactly what's happening. It should be the case that the value of our load would have no impact on the current, what the load current is. The load current would be defined by a transconductance, a certain transconductance. So you think in terms of a FET, right? We talk about, you know, the, the current source of a FET being equal to GM times VGS, right? The transconductance GM times the input voltage VGS. So here we would have an input voltage VN times some transconductance in the circuit, and that should give us the load current. So I could have 50 ohms, 500 ohms. It won't matter, shouldn't matter, as long as I don't make this so large that we would produce a voltage beyond what the op amp is capable of, right? You know, once that happens, all bets are off, all right? So let's do a little analysis here and see how this little beastie works. All right, so remember we have a couple of rules for our linear operation amplifiers. What are those rules? Well, rule number one, you can put them in either order, but rule number one is basically that the input differential voltage, also called V error, is approximately zero volts. In other words, the voltage that we would see between pins three and two, the plus and minus inputs, this is ideally zero volts. Okay, rule number two, the input current into the signal inputs of the op amp, in other words, again, uh, pin three and pin two over here, those currents are approximately zero. All right, and then we can kind of go from there. So we start off with our input voltage, in this case, one volt peak. And we can apply a little Kirchhoff loop around here, right? There's this potential drop on the op amp, and then there's a drop across this feedback resistor, RI. Well, we've just said, rule number one, this current is zero. Excuse me, this voltage is zero. So that means the drop across RI must equal whatever the input voltage is, okay? And obviously it would have the same polarity. If this is zero, then I must have a polarity plus to minus top to bottom on RI, just like I have on my source. All right, this is my reference polarity. All right, that's going to produce a current, and that current is going to flow down like this through RI. Now, look at this node. There's a current path here, and there's a current path here. KCL must be satisfied. Sum of currents in must equal sum of currents out. Well, this current, right? feeds pin 2, in other words, an input on the op amp. And we know that that current should be zero. So if this current through here, right, and I don't even care which way it's supposed to be going, that current's zero, which means that all of the current through our eye must be flowing out of the op amp through the load and then coming down, all right? In other words, this current is the load current. So I load would have to equal whatever the input voltage is divided by the resistance Ri. Now we can also write that as a constant, 1 over Ri, times Vn. So that constant 1 over Ri, guess what? That's the circuit transconductance. In other words, that is the GM of this circuit, all right? 
Okay, so at this point, we should do a couple of checks. It should be the case that 50 ohms, 500 ohms, you know, whatever I put in here, I should get the same result, right? Load doesn't matter. We program that translation of voltage to current through the value of Ri. So in this particular circuit, right, we have one volt coming in, 1k ohm, so one volt over 1k would give us a milliamp. Or you think of this as uh, the GM value, one over 1k is one millisiemen, one millisiemen times a volt, same deal. All right. I'll tell you what, this is a little bit busy, so let's clean this up. Okay, now do a transient analysis on this and see what we get. All righty. So take a look. So here's, here's our ammeter, right? Uh, this is a little squished, so I am going to change the uh, limits on here. All right, so instead of 10, let's make this maybe 2 so we can see this pretty well. All right, so there, bingo, there's our milliamp, right? Looking good. This would be in phase with the input. Notice we're starting at one, millis uh, one millisecond, so that's one cycle in. This is looking really quite good. Let's go back. We'll change this. You know, hey, I said 500 ohms should work. Let's see if we get the same thing. And sure enough, we do. All right. Again, the scaling is a little off. This time I'm going to just put a probe out here, see what our peak is. So there's our peak, again, at about 1 milliamp. So looks good. Let me bring this back to the original value. And in fact, you know, it should be, oops, it should be that it's the RI that does this. So if we crank this up to, let's say, um, well, if I bring it to 2K, I'll tell you what, let's go the other way. Let's bring it down in value so I get a higher transconductance. So I'll cut it in half. This should double up our current, right? Because uh, 1 over 500 ohms would be 2 millisiemens, and 2 millisiemens times the, the volt should give us a couple of milliamps rather than just a milliamp. Let's see what we got. Bingo! 2 milliamps. All right, there's a slight offset that we're seeing. Probably a small DC offset, which is fooling Tina over here on its auto scale. But basically, it's a 2 milliamp peak current, flow, uh, current um, arrangement. All right. Hey, can't complain about that. So bottom line, value of load doesn't make a difference unless, like I said, it gets so large that the current times our load produces a voltage that would cause saturation, clipping. Um, or, right, you know, you, you could theoretically put on a crazy low value over here. Like if I put one ohm in, you know, one volt over an ohm would be an amp. So in which case you would, instead of getting voltage clipping, you'd get current clipping, saturation clipping on the op amp. But, you know, within those limits of the op amp, everything should work out um, according to our relationship, right? I load is basically VN over RI. Or if you want to be a little bit more you know, formal about the presentation, we say that the transconductance of the circuit is equal to 1 over Ri, and the load current is Gm times Vn. All right? And there you go, a op amp-based voltage-controlled current source, right? a voltage-to-current transducer. Beautiful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.